Okay, we are approaching the last episode in this long series that took me over a month to make. In the last episode, I mentioned the uh, opinion of the Supreme Court in uh, Heller versus D.C., where the Supreme Court finally allowed handguns to be used. This is the textbook. A criminal Law, 8th edition, Sue Titus Reed, page 260 and 261. Okay, that's... So you can look that up. It's a very good opinion. You should read it. It's very, very intelligent thinking. Like me. Okay. This video is about branching out to the non-gun community. Now, when a, when a foreign dignitary comes to the United States, the federal government is responsible for his safety, his or her safety. They usually send the Secret Service or the State Department or the U.S. Marshal Service or some federal agency to handle their security. Many years ago, that was not the case, many years ago the local mayor or police commissioner or sheriff was responsible for the security. Now, there was an anti-Semitic man, I forget his name, I forget where he was from, who knows. There was an anti-Semitic man. Now, remember back in that day it was very, very popular to be anti-Semitic. This is before World War II, this is before the Holocaust. Being anti-Semitic was very politically correct. Not so much today, but back then it was. And this man was visiting New York City. And the police commissioner of New York City was charged with this man's safety. The police commissioner was named Theodore Roosevelt Sr. He would obviously join the army. He would earn the Medal of Honor, even though he got 103 years later. He would become sec Under Secretary of the Navy, Vice President, President, earn the Nobel Peace Prize, which means he's the only person to have the Medal of Honor and the Nobel Peace Prize. Very, very, very great, great man. Phenomenal figure. I'm so proud to be from the same state as him. And. Theodore Roosevelt Sr. realized this person is anti-Semitic and I'm responsible for his safety. You know where this is going, don't you? Yeah. Future President Roosevelt assigned nothing but Jewish detectives. This person hates Jewish people, is prejudiced against Jewish people. And he is assigning nothing but Jewish detectives to guard this man's life. And if I know Teddy Roosevelt, he had detectives that had the most Jewish sounding names. They probably were Orthodox Jews, and they had long beards. They probably looked Jewish. Because Teddy Roosevelt really wanted to make a message, to send a message to this guy, and to drive him home. You don't like Jewish people? You're anti Semitic? Good. Jewish people are going to be responsible for your security in this large city full of crime. Deal with it. Did he convert the man? I don't know, but he probably taught him a really good lesson. That's a social experiment called exposure. You don't like something, you're afraid of something, we're going to show it to you. And we're going to make you see it. I know, it's crazy. Um, have you ever seen Batman Begins? In Batman Begins, Bruce Wayne, played by Christian Bale, is afraid of bats. So he goes into a cave, which will later become the Bat Cave underneath his mansion, and he surrounds himself by bats. And he stands there and all the bats swarm around him. Then he dresses up like a bat and beats up criminals. We need to do a little exposure on the non-gun non owning community. We need to bring non-gun owners, in particular people that are prejudiced against gun owners, because you know what? It's the same thing. If you're prejudiced against Jewish people, you fear them or dislike them for a stupid reason. Okay? If you're afraid of gun owners, you are afraid of them and you dislike them for a stupid reason. You believe they're criminals. You believe if you go to the gun range, you're going to see drug dealers, gang members, anti-American rednecks that want to blow up the government, organized crime figures, mob enforcers, 
you have this preconceived notion that you are going to go to the gun range and every criminal that's got a lot of prison is going to be there. Because criminals and gun owners are one and the same. Okay? We need to invite gun owners into the ranges and the stores. And the, the non gun owners, I'm sorry, non gun owners. And the non gun owners need to be forced to witness our lifestyle. I mean, obviously, we don't want to kidnap them. You know, we want to invite them. We don't want to force anybody to stay against their will. But we need to show them the light. We need to show them what goes on. They need to go to the range and see that we have more rules at a gun range than we do in elementary school. Seriously, I haven't been any place aside from first grade that had more rules at a gun range. Also, the gun store. They believe that gun dealers are selling fully automatic machine guns to violent murderers out the back door. They need to go to the gun store and they need to see that for themselves. They need to see the forms we fill out, they need to see the ID we show, they need to see the background investigation the dealer does. They need to show how, see how the dealer handles the gun and shows the gun to us when we first buy it. They need to see this. They should make. They should be asked to sit in on a gun class, a, a shooting class, a, some kind of safety class, so that they can see that really not that bad. They need to see the screening process. They, I would love if I could take the um, safety test that I had to take and give it to a non-gun owner. I guarantee they wouldn't get an 80 on it. You had to get an 80 to pass it. I got an 88. I guarantee they wouldn't. And we need to talk to them. They need to see who we are, how we are. Okay, when I go to my gun range, some people there are members of law enforcement. Some are retired members of law enforcement. Some, we have one guy who's a registered nurse. We have one guy who was in charge of security at the air, at the local airport. He was a Vietnam veteran from the Air Force. We have, you know, you go to the gun range, you see teachers, you see doctors, you see nurses, you see attorneys. Um, you see, you will see people from every walk of life at the gun range. Every skin color, every race and religion. I go to my gun range, I see Jewish people, I see Christian people. I see black people, I see white people, I see men, I see women, I see old people, I see young people, I see people of every, there is not a single solitary race you can think of that you will not find at a gun range. There's not a single lifestyle you can think of. You see rich people there, you see poor people there, you see middle class there, you, you can see every aspect of life at a gun range. Okay. Millions of people that are practicing the Second Amendment for whatever reason they want they want home protection to carry conceal they um uh, this is a hunting gun this is target gun they're a competition shooter they they're in the military they they just got out of the military they want to go into the military you will see them there some people like myself have special licenses I have an armed guards license some of us have um. Uh, Instructors' licenses, dealers' licenses, you will see this there. Someone we really need to bring to the gun range, but I really need to see these people there, are the anti gun politicians. The politicians, the celebrities, the public advocates that get on the podium all day and scream about how horrible guns are and how bad the Second Amendment is. We need to see these people there. Let me check my time, please. I know I'm paranoid about my time going over this limit. Okay, I have time. Oops. I'm sorry. sorry about that. Okay, we need to see the anti-gun advocates there, the anti-gun people there. Now, if you're an anti-gun official, you're probably going to get a lot of dirty looks at the gun range. No one's going to hurt you, but you're going to get dirty looks. Maybe you should sit down and talk to the people. Maybe they're not as fanatical as you thought they were. Maybe the, the criminals that you're afraid of getting the guns are not there. It's worth the effort. 99% of gun owners vote Republican. They do. Because, in my area anyway, because sometimes Republicans are pro-gun, Democrats are anti-gun, but there's been exceptions. I'm going to show you an exception right now. Next month, there's a... A favorite candidate from mayor of my hometown. 
This man is a Democrat. He's a conservative Democrat, but he's a Democrat. I was talking with him in my gun range. My gun range is supporting this man. Yes. Because he took a stand for gun owners. He might not be Chuck Norris or Charlton Heston in his gun views, but he took a stand and he said gun owners aren't that bad. Leave them alone. He said we should be left alone with our lifestyle. So because of that, we are voting for him. He has pretty much every single gun owner in the city voting for him. And even though 99% of those gun owners have to cross party lines to vote for him, they are still voting for him. That's how I run my belief. The NRA sends me messages about who's pro-gun, who's anti-gun. I vote based on your protection of my constitutional rights. If you're against my constitutional rights, find someone else to vote for you. If you're for constitutional rights, I, I, I will come out and speak for you. If this mayoral candidate wanted me to make a YouTube video for him, I would do it. In fact, my, my mother works for the city. My mother knows him personally. My mother was on the board that gave him the sponsorship of the city workers. I would do it for him. If a pro-gun politician, Democrat or Republican, black or white, Republican or Jewish, conservative, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, said to me, listen, I believe in the Second Amendment. I want you to make a YouTube video for me. And I'm going to upload your YouTube video onto my channel and onto your own channel. I would do that free of charge. I would. We need to branch out to the non gunning community and we need to show them that we're not that bad. Okay? Teddy Roosevelt did it with some anti-Semitic fool. And whether or not it worked or not, the point was still made. We could bring all the anti-gun people to the range and they could all be afraid for some reason. They could all be, no, 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 I still don't like this place. But at least the effort is made. Okay, I think we're done. I think my phone will be charging. I got my phone will be charging. Okay, this entire video series is finally done. Thank God. Thank you for your time and patience.